Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. And this is a very important surgeon question and answer session all about life expectancy and heart valve surgery. I am very excited to be joined by Dr. Joanna Chikwi, who is the chair of cardiac surgery at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. During her fantastic career, Dr. Chikwi has performed thousands of cardiac procedures of which most have involved some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement procedure. Dr. Chikwi, as always, it's great to have you with us today. Great to be with you, Adam. Dr. Chikwi, we got lots of great patient questions that came in for you about life expectancy and heart valve disease. But first, I want you to take a big step back and help the patients out there understand what an important part of your practice, the research, the studying, and the procedures you've been focused on specifically about heart valve disease. Can you help the patients understand how important this is to you? My main focus in heart surgery has been valvular heart disease. My research for over two decades has been focused on mitral aortic tricuspid valve disease, and that's really informed my practice. So now when I sit down with patients in the office and we plan surgery, I can bring a lot of what I've learned in research to that conversation. This is the research that's informed how you choose your surgeon, the questions you might ask that surgeon, your choice of procedure, the timing of your procedure, and how you do after that procedure. And I'm confident it's helped patients have those conversations with other surgeons. Dr. Chikwi, it's great to hear that your time doing the research is not only helping your practice, but the practice of surgeons and cardiologists all over the world. So thank you for that work. I want to start by just having a really big and open conversation about heart valve disease for someone who might just be diagnosed or maybe a family member who is watching a video for the first time about heart valve disease, can you help them understand what is a heart valve disorder? Everyone has four valves in their heart and heart valve disease is a huge spectrum that goes from just having risk factors for problems with those valves to having to talk to a surgeon about repairing or replacing those valves because they've become so diseased. So given that spectrum and all the different types of valve disease that are out there, is there a fundamental problem or two problems that you see across all those different types of disease? Really, you can think of the problems that might affect one or more of your heart valves in terms of two kinds of challenges. Maybe the valve is too tight, that's stenosis. Maybe the valve leaks, that's regurgitation. Some valves have both, but most of them fall into one of those two camps. So I've got tight valves, I got leaky valves. It sounds like blood flow is the big issue here in and throughout the heart. Is that true, Dr. Chikwi? And if so, what kind of symptoms could patients have? That's absolutely true, Adam. So the job of the valves is to control the flow of blood so that it goes in one direction throughout the heart. And when the valves get too tight, the heart has to force the blood through tighter holes. And when the valves leaks, Half the blood is going forward in the right direction, but half is going backwards in the wrong direction. That means your heart has to work twice as hard as normal to do the same job. Both of those scenarios mean that your heart initially gets stronger. It's like training a muscle, but eventually your heart starts to weaken. How might you feel that? People commonly complain of feeling winded, feeling breathless, fatigued, occasionally chest pain, and sometimes dizzy or even fainting when they start to exercise. So this is a very serious, potentially symptomatic disease. Can patients be asymptomatic? Great question. So yes, patients can be asymptomatic, i.e. feel fine, even though they have severe valve disease. And that's really important. That's important because we're not doing surgery to make those patients feel better. You might be able to get through five sets of tennis. How are we going to improve on that? We're trying to improve on that by making sure you live longer and you live without major problems like stroke, atrial fibrillation, or heart failure. 
Dr. Chickley, given all those very serious risk factors, I've got to ask you the big question that patients often have, which is, is heart valve disease fatal? If you remember one thing today, it's this. Yes, severe heart valve disease is fatal. Severe heart valve disease has a solution. For most patients, there's an option that can treat that and treat it safely and effectively and get you back to a near normal life expectancy and quality of life. Dr. Chickley, I'm sure our patients out there are wondering now, which type of valve disease and procedures can lead me to a normal life expectancy? Can you talk about maybe some of the variances you might see in your research and literature about life expectancy after a procedure? The most dramatic difference in restoring life expectancy after heart valve surgery is in the mitral area, where if you can repair a prolapsing valve well, that restores near normal, if not normal, life expectancy. Whereas if you replace that valve, you've definitely improved life expectancy compared to not doing anything at all, but it's not going to be as normal as if you'd repaired the valve. Dr. Chickwee, it's great to hear about the mitral valve and the near normal status you can get there for life expectancy. What about over on the aortic valve? Can you talk about how, maybe we start with aortic valve replacements. What is the, the expectancy for a patient who needs a replacement? Aortic valve replacement is one of the commonest operations we do. And one of the reasons is you can't really repair a stenotic aortic valve. And replacements are a great option. You have two choices, broadly speaking. One's a tissue or animal valve replacement, which in younger patients lasts about eight to 10 years, in older patients, probably about 12 to 15 years. You generally don't need to take a blood thinner. And when it wears out, it could be replaced by a valve inserted through the artery in your leg. So you wouldn't need second time surgery. The other choice is a mechanical valve replacement and that will probably last many, many decades. A handful of patients might need it replaced. And the downside of that is that you need to take a blood thinner to reduce your risk of forming blood clots in the valve that could cause strokes. Dr. Chickley, very helpful. Now let's talk about aortic valve repair, which we're hearing about more and more these days. Can you share about life expectancy for that procedure? I think we could argue about life expectancy and aortic valve repair until the cows come home because there's so much different data. The bottom line is if I had aortic regurgitation, I'd want to try and find a surgeon that could repair that valve because I know it will minimize my need to take blood thinners it will hopefully minimize my risk of stroke and hopefully give me the longest distance from surgery without needing any other intervention on my valve. Dr. Chickwee, what are maybe some of the other considerations that patients need to think about um, before having that initial surgery done? The three big other considerations that come into play when we're planning valve surgery are atrial fibrillation. If we can treat that at the time of the valve surgery, and ensure that patient is free of atrial fibrillation, that's a huge improvement both on quality of life and hopefully length of life. The second thing is coronary artery disease. Some patients do need bypasses to treat blockages in their coronary arteries at the time of valve surgery. And the third thing is aneurysms. If we're dealing with an aortic valve, particularly in younger patients, aneurysms are surprisingly common and they can be safely fixed at the time of the aortic valve surgery. So important for the patients to hear this information, Dr. Chickley, about the comorbid diseases associated with valve disease. And I've got to ask you, true or false? At the time of surgery, some of those cardiac disorders are under treated. That's absolutely true. However, sometimes that's the right thing to do. If you're a younger, fitter patient, it makes absolute sense to be more aggressive about treating all of the cardiac comorbid conditions at the time of surgery to maximize your long-term survival. But if you're a bit older and frailer, it makes more sense to do an efficient operation that concentrates on the life-threatening valve lesion. And you may be better off leaving some of the other comorbidities alone. Dr. Chickwee, a uh, real understanding of a heart valve procedure is 
like all procedures, there could be complications. Are there any common complications after heart valve surgery that may impact life expectancy? Probably the commonest complication after heart surgery is atrial fibrillation. And because we know about its impact on life expectancy, we are very aggressive about preventing it and treating it. So most patients who experience atrial fibrillation in the hospital, and that might be about 20 or 30% of patients, will go home free of atrial fibrillation because we'll have corrected it. Dr. Chikwi, I love how you and the team at Cedars are so uh, aggressively going after AFib for your patients. Got to ask you again, getting back to life expectancy, what role will a reoperation or a redo have for patients with valve disease? The thing to remember is that a small number of patients will need reoperation. It's getting smaller because we can so often now do this through transcatheter techniques, not surgery. The second thing to remember is go to an experienced center for your reoperation. It is technically more challenging. It requires an experienced team, including an ICU that's there 24 seven, and that will really maximize your chances of doing just as well as you did the first time around. Dr. Chick, we have got to ask you for the patients, are there any misconceptions about life expectancy and heart valve surgery? This isn't a misconception as much as a huge stumbling block faced by most patients with mitral, aortic or tricuspid regurgitation who really will benefit from a repair rather than a replacement. And the stumbling block is finding the right surgical team because my research has shown enormous variation in the ability of surgical teams to perform a safe and effective valve repair when that's what's going to give you the best chance of a long and healthy quality of life. Dr. Chikwi, I cannot thank you enough for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles and helping the heartvalvesurgery.com community learn about life expectancy, heart valve disease, and the procedures used to correct it. Thanks so much, Dr. Chickley. Thank you, Adam. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.